Hi, I'm Ted Morrissey, and uh, welcome to Revisionist Fictions, which is a literature course in the uh, Lindenwood University MFA in Writing program. And uh, I'm very happy to be teaching this course. Uh, Revisionist Fictions is uh, near and dear to my heart, both as a reader and as a writer. And I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about that as we uh, go through the quarter. Um, just wanted to uh, make a little welcome video for you and uh, introduce you a little bit about the class and, and et cetera. Uh, first of all, disclaimer, my refrigerator is making ice periodically, so don't worry about any of the weird noises from that regard. My dogs are liable to start barking at any minute, and I mean actual, literal dogs, not my feet. All right, so apologies in advance for any amateurish sounds or things that happen beyond my control. But um, Revisionist Fictions um, is a course that uh, is designed to look at uh, certain sort of classical or canonical texts and then newer texts that have been written uh, based on those, inspired by those in some way. Um, I know some people uh, think the terms revisionist fiction and fan fiction are synonymous terms, that they mean the same thing in essence. Um, I don't agree with that, but um, that's one, certainly one of the questions we're going to be dealing with this quarter is uh, are you know, revisionist fiction and, uh, and fan fiction the same thing? And if not, uh, how are they different from each other? And, and uh, what, what are those differences, you know, et cetera? Um, basically, uh, we're going to look at uh, three classic or, or canonical texts, and then we're going to look at some works based on those. And uh, for two of the canonical texts, we're going to look at two, uh, two revisionist texts. And for one, we're going to look at one. Uh, but that's uh, not a matter of a bias or anything like that. It's just the, the math is difficult to work out when you've got 11 weeks to work with. But we're going to start with um, the Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf. And I put the uh, R.M. Liuza translation on the syllabus. It's uh, one of my favorite translations. There's lots of them out there, and I've read lots of them. Uh, there are online versions that you can access, and that would be fine. Um, you know, obviously there are some differences between the translations, but essentially the story is going to be the same and certainly the same enough that it will serve our purposes. But the idea is to kind of get a sense of what the original, you know, is about and uh, the characters, plot, images, themes, motifs, you know, etc. And then we're going to take a look at a couple of um, revisionist texts inspired by or based on Beowulf. The first that we're going to look at is uh, John Gardner's novel Grendel, which um, is almost a, a classic text in and of itself. Uh, I mean, we could maybe could do a course where we use it as a canonical text and look at look at a revisionist work based on John Gardner's Grendel. But, uh, but um, if it isn't too obvious, uh, it's Beowulf told from the perspective of one of the monsters. Uh, not too much of a spoiler there, but uh, we'll take a look at that and uh, see what Gardner uh, can do with, uh, with Beowulf. And then we'll also take a look at a much more recently published book, uh, Grendel's Mother uh, by Susan. And my apologies on not knowing how to pronounce the middle name, but I tried. I tried to find out. Uh, I'm going to say Sign, Susan Sign Morrison, Signe. If you know, by all means, let me know. Um, I even looked at some YouTube videos where she was introduced and they all copped out and just said Susan Morrison or Dr. Morrison. So anywho. We're going to read uh, Grendel's Mother, which um, is uh, you know looking at another of the of the monsters in Grendel and getting kind of uh, that that character's perspective on the classic tale. All right, so we'll take a look at those. Then we're going to uh, switch gears uh, in terms of you know coming up to much more modern canonical text, and we're going to look at uh, the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Uh, it is Jekyll, by the way. There's there's one of my dogs. Um, and, and, uh, and we're going to read that. And then, uh, based on that, we're going to take a look at, uh, Valerie Martin's, uh, Mary Riley, which was a very popular book when it came out. It was made into a, a major motion picture with, uh, John Malkovich, who's always creepy and great whenever he makes a movie. Um, but, um, I do want to give you a bit of an apology. I, I, put the Dover Thrift edition on the class list, and I quite honestly hadn't read this version. I was just trying to save you some money, but then when I got my version and I realized it was printed in like three-point type, um, 
I don't know that I'll even be reading this version. I went ahead and downloaded it to my Kindle so I can read a version without killing myself. So, so feel free to maybe find a different version. Again, I was, it was the best of intentions, and maybe you won't have any trouble with the uh, size of the, the print, but uh, it was bothering me just a bit. But, um, you know, the, uh, the Stevenson book um, is, is really, really interesting. Um, you know, it, it was written at the kind of the cusp of the development of psychoanalysis and, and um, a whole sort of a revolution in the way uh, we came to think about um, the unconscious mind and behavior and, you know, personality development and so forth and so on. And so it really has an interesting spot, both in sort of literary history, but also scientific history, medical history, you know, social history, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll be probably touching on you know, some of those issues as we move forward. And then we are going to um, uh, kind of go way back in time. So, we're, so the canonical texts are definitely out of sequence. But for the last part of the, of the course, we're going to take a look at um, some New Testament stories uh, based on the life of uh, Jesus uh, particularly the arrest and crucifixion and those kinds of things. Um, now, uh, I, I put this as a, as a suggestion. The, uh, the new Oxford Annotated Bible is a really good scholarly edition, but kind of like with Beowulf, any, any access to, to any Bible text, uh, online versions or any versions you may have access to otherwise would certainly uh, fit the bill. You know, uh, what we're going to try and do with, with this, and, and it, it may be easier said than done for, for some students compared to others, but um, try to look at the, uh, the New Testament stories as actual just stories um, and think of the, uh, the persons mentioned, Jesus, for example, as characters and look at, you know, character development, look at uh, plot development, uh, et cetera, and kind of see uh, what we can make of, of the uh, of the texts uh, from a more traditional sort of, um, you know, narrative analysis kind of approach, as opposed to looking at them as religious texts or scripture or, or something like that. So anyway, that's going to be um, our last canonical text, and we're going to read a couple of them. Um, of uh, revisionist books based on that. Uh, one is uh, Barabbas by uh, Par Lankervist and, or Lagervist, Lagervist. I did try to pronounce that correctly, uh, but uh, anywho, um, and uh, this also a very well-known text, uh, movies made based on, etc. And then um, we're also going to read um, a, uh, a newer text. In fact, it was just published last year, I believe. Uh, Colm Toybin's uh, The Testament of Mary. I'm not showing you that because for some reason I forgot to order my copy. The copy I read was a library edition and had to give that back. So I don't quite have that to show to you right now, but I'm sure you have a copy. You can probably look at it yourself. But um, uh, I have tried to keep everything on the shorter side. Uh, you know, we obviously have to move very quickly uh, in a course like this. And uh, so I try not to overload you too much with reading, because obviously you're expected to do quite a bit of writing with the weekly discussion posts, you know, both your own and also obviously responding to at least to classmates posts. That's a lot of writing to do on a weekly basis. There are going to be two uh, larger papers, a midterm paper and a, and a final paper. Um, a little bit, a little bit different approach for those uh, in terms of what you might normally do in a literature class. And any of you who may have had uh, me for the um, don't tell me the uh, long story in novella class. Sorry, I went thorn there for a second. Uh, in that class, you know, we wrote fairly traditional uh, literary analysis for the midterm and final. But for this class, because of the nature of it, I thought it might be interesting for us to try our hand at revisionist fiction for the midterm and the final. And obviously, you can read in more detail about this online. But uh, essentially, the idea is to, for the midterm, since uh, we're going to write that after having read. Um, Beowulf, to try your hand at some revisionist uh, uh, creative writing, and uh, you know that could be a number of things, and then um, also add to that a little bit of analysis in terms of kind of what you were drawing from uh, in the original to write your creative work, um, you know how it may have influenced your reading of the original work things like that. And then for the final, we're going to do the same thing, except instead of working with Beowulf, we'll either be working with uh, New Testament narrative or uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, since those will be the two that we will have read at that point. All right. So a little bit different approach to uh, the midterm and the final, but uh, being creative writing 
folk. Uh, I think uh, perhaps you'll enjoy that. I know I'll enjoy reading it. And um, that's pretty much it. Just want to welcome you to the class. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you might want to, if you have any questions along the way, um, probably the best approach, frankly, is to email me. Use, use the Lindenwood email, which I'll respond to pretty promptly. Obviously, I'll be monitoring the discussion boards and all that stuff regularly. But um, I think just to be on the safe side, if you have a question you really want answered, you know, uh, as soon as possible, just go ahead and email me and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. If it's a question that everyone would benefit from in terms of my response to it, as oftentimes it is, I'll go ahead and turn you know the response into some sort of an announcement so that everyone can kind of get in on the uh, the information and not necessarily citing you as the the source of the question but just you know if you bring something up that everyone really ought to know and some some oversight of mine or, or some clarification i need to give you then i'll make an announcement about it all right so there you have it um, let's have a great quarter i'm looking forward to it and hopefully you are too